Hey, Colonial Woods, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Katie Johnson, and I'm the director of Club 56. So a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Phil and Pastor Ann, they put out a challenge to each of our pastors and directors on staff to share a devotional thought. So this is something that the Lord has been teaching us or laid on our hearts during this time. And so today I want to share with you something that is both something that I think that God is wanting me to share with you, but also it's something that God has been reminding me of over these last few weeks. And so I've been going through a study and it's called In Spirit and in Truth, a study of biblical worship. Before we get too much further, I really think it's important for us to have a baseline, a definition of what worship is. So worship is our response to the presence and the character of God. So it's a way of life, whether it's through spontaneous actions or through spiritual disciplines we have implemented in our lives. But worship, it's not just that, it's also a gift. And we're both givers and recipients because worship, it allows us the incredible privilege of drawing near to God, our creator. So as Christ followers, everything we do can and should be an act of worship. So one of the ways that I really connect with God is through singing. I love to sing and I love to listen to music. But I think it's also really important that we remember that worship looks different for everyone. So what works for me doesn't always work for you. It may look something very different. But again, I think it's important that we, we use the word worship for its true meaning. So a lot of times we use the word worship to just mean singing and playing music. But it's so much more than that. So if we remember that worship is our response to the presence and the character of God, we can do that in a lot of different ways. So we can worship through service, through gratitude, through holiness and prayer, through celebration, through sacrifice, and so many other ways. But today, I want to look at worship through obedience. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to be looking at Daniel chapter 6. So it starts off in verse 1 by saying, Darius decided to appoint 120 satraps over the kingdom, stationed throughout the whole realm. And over them, he placed three administrators, including Daniel. So these satraps would be accountable to them so that the king would not be defrauded. Daniel distinguished himself above the administrators and the satraps because he had an extraordinary spirit. So the king planned to set him over the whole realm. The administrators and the satraps, therefore, they kept trying to find a charge against Daniel regarding the kingdom but they could find no charge or corruption for he was trustworthy and no negligence or corruption was found in him. Then these men said, we will never find any charge against this Daniel unless we find something against him concerning the law of his God. So all the administrators of the kingdom, so that's the prefix, the satraps, the advisors, the governors, they all got together and they decided that they were gonna go before the king and ask the king to make a decree that for 30 days, no one was to call out or pray to any other god. Otherwise, they would be thrown into the lion's den. And as they presented this document to King Darius, he signed it. All right, let's jump down to verse 10, which reads, When Daniel learned that the document had been signed, he went to, this, went to his house. The windows in the upstairs room opened toward Jerusalem, and three times a day he got down on his knees, prayed, and gave thanks to his God, just as he had done before. So you probably have heard this story before, or maybe you're hearing it for the first time. But what happens next is that the administrators of the kingdom, they find Daniel and they have him thrown into the lion's den, despite the fact that King Darius wanted to save Daniel. But they convinced him to follow through with his decree. But before the den was sealed up, Darius, he yelled to Daniel, May your God, whom you continually serve, rescue you. So the next morning, King Darius, he hurried off to the den, and upon arrival, he cried out in anguish to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you continually serve, been able to rescue you from the lions? Then Daniel spoke with the king. May the king live forever. My God sent his angels and shut the mouths of the lions. And they haven't harmed me, for I was found innocent before him. And also before you, your majesty, I've done no harm. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to take Daniel out of the den. 
When Daniel was brought up from the den, he was found to be unharmed, for he trusted God. The king then gave the command, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel, well, let's just say it didn't end well for them or their families. You see, for Daniel, there was no room for discussion about obedience. Even when he knew that he'd be thrown into the lion's den for worshiping the Lord, verse 10 says, Three times a day, he got down on his knees, he prayed, and he gave thanks to his God, just as he had done before. So obedience and worship were a way of life for Daniel, a posture of his heart and indicative of his relationship with God. It wasn't just a response to crisis. So in giving our lives in obedience to the Lord and doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, we ascribe worth to God acknowledging that he alone is worthy of our worship and not only through our words but also through our actions so when we choose to live in accordance with god's word and with his ways we submit to his will and die to our own so my hope is that today we remember that our obedience is an act of worship it's our response to the presence and the character of god and i want to leave you with this challenging thought so living as an exile in Babylon for most of his life, Daniel knew that this earth was not his ultimate home, and he lived like it. He lived in obedience and continual service to his king, the Lord of heaven and of earth. Do we live like that? Do our lives look radically obedient as Daniel's life? Do the Lord's commands bring light to our eyes or weight to our hearts? So we know that God's commands are for our good. But if we're being honest, we're wrecked, half-hearted people who worship so many other things in our lives. But fortunately for us, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He doesn't leave us to ourselves. So while we still were sinning and lost in our sin, Jesus came to save us from ourselves, humbling himself and becoming obedient to the point of death. So even now, he's sanctifying us into a people who will worship him with our whole hearts and our whole lives in obedience to him. So God, the one who calls us to be obedient, he gives us everything that we need to obey him. So my question for you is how are you choosing to worship through obedience today?